All right, so we left off last time and we had created this particular expression down here at the bottom and we're going to start with this expression. Um, we'll copy and paste it to the next slide and we will do a truth table next for this expression. So, hmm, let's see, I've got a little bit too much I copied here, so let's clean that off. All right, there we go. So we're going to take this particular um, argument and we want to find out if it is a valid argument. So we're gonna start just as we always do with P and Q and R. And at least one of the nice things here is that we don't have um, you know, a lot of implications with these negations. So, but we do have some implications, so we could put those next like we did in class. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. We'll do the tilde P and tilde Q and tilde R columns, and I'll pause for a moment and write all those in now. So we've got P, Q, R, tilde P, tilde Q, and tilde R. The next thing we have is we have P and Q. Now P and Q is this first one right here, and then after P and Q, we have P and Q, which we'll label number one. We have one implies R. And after we have one implies R, which we'll call two, we're going to have two and tilde R. So let's draw in some of those uh, lines that we were working with. Maybe we'll call this three. Now we're actually really close to done. I need a tilde P or tilde Q column, which I'll call four. And then our final column will be three implies four. All right, so we're going to fill in the truth statements now. Um, the first ones, as always, are our true, false, uh, typical arrangement. So we've got true, 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 false, 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 and false. Then we're going to do doubles. True, true, false, false, true, true, false, false. Then singles. True, false, true, false, true, false, true, and false. Now, the next one, tilde P, is going to take P and reverse it, so I'm going to have four falses, and then four trues. Then I'm going to do doubles, starting with false, so false, false, true, true, false, false, true, true, and then our singles, false, true, false, true, false, true, false, true. Now we're going to do some that actually requires some thinking. All right, so we're going to do P and Q. So to do P and Q, I need to take my P column and my Q column, and I'm looking for and, which means both statements have to be true. They are true in the first two. The second two have Q false, so they're false. And the last four have P false, so they're false. All right, next we're going to take this particular statement and do an arrow. So we're going to go with, one, and we need to know if it implies R, which is back over here. So to start with, we've got true implies true. Well, that's true. The second one is true implies false, which is false. And then everything else starts out false, so its result is true on implication. All right, now we're going to do one and two, let's see, no, 
to the statement we just did. We're going to do an and statement joining that with tilde r back here. So I've got and statement that both have to be true, so the first one's false, the second one's false, and the third one's false. And finally, I've got a true true there, so that's true. We've got false true is false, Fal true true, there's another true, and false true is false, and last one true true, so that's true. All right. Then we're going to take tilde P or tilde Q. So this one we are going back to the beginning. So tilde P, we'll do run tilde Q. Um, and it's an or statement. So an or statement is true when either piece individually is true. So the first one's false, false, which is false. The second one is false, false, which is also false. Then I have false true, which is true. I have another false true, which is true. These are or statements again. True, false, which is true. In fact, tilde P is true at the very end on all four, so those are all true. And then finally, last but not least, we are going to do an implication between the last two. Row three implies row four. So as you can see on row three, we have false implies false then, that's true. False implies false is true. False implies true is true. True implies true is true. False implies true is true. True implies true is true, false implies true is true, true implies true is true, and therefore this argument is valid. This is in a valid argument form. All right, so with as much work as that is, you're going to like what we've got for our last um, bit of information in this chapter, and that's actually identifying um, which type of a, of a problem we have based on the form that it's in, in symbols, symbol form. So there's four valid argument forms. One's called modus ponens, and it looks something like this. P implies Q. So if P, then Q. So if you know P, then you automatically know Q. So this would be something like me saying, if I'm a mom, then I'm a woman. And then I tell you, I'm a mom. Then you would automatically know I'm a woman. Modus tollens is P arrow Q. And then it's tilde Q and therefore tilde P. So again, let's do the mom example. If I'm a mom, then I'm a woman. So if I come in and I tell you I am not a woman, then you know I am not a mom. Just disjunctive syllogism is the only one that is not an implication. It's P or Q, and then tilde P, and then it necessitates that to be Q. So this would be like me saying, I ate cereal or I ate toast. I did not eat cereal. Well, therefore, I ate toast. Um, and, and this could be very equivalently that this is the same thing as having um, P or Q, and if I had tilde Q, then I would know that uh, I have P. It's the exact same, exact same form, just the symbols are in different places because the P or Q is commutative. Now, reasoning by transitivity looks like this. I've got P arrow Q. I've got Q arrow R. And that implies that P arrow R is true. All right, we also have two forms that are fallacies. These are invalid argument forms. They create errors in reasoning. So this is P arrow Q, and then Q, therefore P. All right, so this would be like me saying, if I'm a mom, then I'm a woman. And I tell you, I'm a woman, well, then you still don't know if I'm a mom, and that's the problem, is this would say, then I'm a mom, and maybe, and maybe not. <laughs> so the last one is P arrow Q, so, and then I have tilde P, therefore tilde Q. So if I'm a mom, then I'm a woman. I am not a mom, therefore I am not a woman. Um, not necessarily, right? I just have to be a woman that has no children. So that's, that's also a fallacy. That argument, line of reasoning, is incorrect. All right, so what we're going to do next is we're actually going to take um, some arguments, and each argument is either valid or it's invalid. And we're going to decide if the argument is valid or a fallacy and give the form that applies. So the work that we're going to show is going to be creating P and Q based on the information. 
So this one says, if Carrie Woods pitches, so the statement is Carrie Woods pitches, we can call that P. And then the second statement, the Cubs win, would be Q. So this would be P, arrow, Q. Then it tells us the Cubs do not win, so that's tilde Q. And we'll do a line. And then it says, then Carrie Wood does not pitch, so that's tilde P. And if you take a look, this is the work I expect to see. You've got to show me that this is what you're doing. And then the argument would be valid. Again, you have to say that. And it says, and give the form that applies. So this one is valid by modus tollens. Because that's the one that matches. We'll do one more of these. If she buys another pair of shoes... So if she buys another pair of shoes, would be P. Her closet will overflow. Well, that would be Q. So this one says P, arrow Q. It says her closet will overflow. Well, that, that's Q. And then it says, then she buys another pair of shoes. Right? Therefore, she buys another pair of shoes, and that's P. And uh, if you match that up, this is actually invalid. And it's invalid by fallacy. of the converse.